Good morning. I'm Jimmy Fiddler, reporting from Washington. Welcome to today's riveting episode, where we delve into the intricate world of our family's financial futures. Strap in, folks, as we embark on a journey through the pages of the Wall Street Journal to decipher the mystery behind why Americans are harboring such profound skepticism towards a booming economy. But hold on to your hats, because this topic is a mouthful. We're diving deep into the enigma of economic optimism versus widespread doubt, fueled by an array of societal and political uncertainties that cast a shadow over the enduring financial stability of many hardworking Americans. Get ready for a roller coaster ride as we sift through the thoughts and musings of over 1,000 typical Americans, uncovering the real opinions that resonate in households across the nation. And don't touch that dial just yet. Stick around until the end of the show where the Honorable Judgey Judgerston of the Court of Public Opinion will weigh in with their verdict on this pressing issue. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show as we unravel the complexities of America's economic psyche right before your very eyes. In a compelling narrative unfolding across America, meet the characters at the heart of today's economic tale. First, there's Clayton Wiles, a rugged truck driver navigating North Carolina's highways, earning his keep in an ever-shifting economy. Then we have Christine Funk, the compassionate nurse in Ohio, tending to patients while balancing her own financial worries in the face of uncertain times. And let's not forget Alfredo Arguello, the resilient entrepreneur with dreams as big as the burgers he serves up in Nashville, defying the odds with his flourishing restaurant empire. But despite their individual triumphs, a cloud of uncertainty hangs over them all. Despite robust spending and tempered inflation, there's a pervasive sense of gloom among Americans, their economic optimism at odds with their deeper anxieties. From suburban Albany to the heart of Texas, families like the Fosters and the Welches grapple with layoffs, rising costs, and the elusive American dream slipping further from their grasp. And in this tale of economic woes, politics looms large. With partisan divisions coloring perceptions, the narrative twists and turns as Republicans and Democrats see the same economy through vastly different lenses. Yet amidst the turmoil, hope flickers. Despite the challenges, individuals like Arguello press on, driven by a belief that brighter days may still lie ahead. So join us on this journey through the highs and lows of the American economy, where every twist and turn reveals the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Now let's hear what real Americans feel about our topic of today. We're not at war. We're not in a depression. We're not in a recession. Yet, somehow, we have a $2 trillion budget deficit. My finances would look great, too, if I had an unlimited credit card that I never had to pay off. Future generations will inherit a giant mess which will end or fundamentally transform the USA. It really is not a complicated issue. While we are not a monarchy, our country's system is based on a strong presidency. How can anyone watch President Biden speak and move around without feeling insecure and afraid? He clearly is not up to the job despite many in the news media trying to tell, sell us that he is. Our eyes and our ears do not lie. His actions in arbitrarily reversing many of the executive orders of former President Trump that were actually working, particularly concerning the border, significantly contributed to our anxiety. It has only gotten worse since then with respect to his incredible incompetence regarding the border issue and foreign policy. Lastly, I do not think anybody should be crowing about the economy until we see what happens through the first and second quarters. Just because people spent like drunken sailors at a bar during the holiday season does not mean that that will continue. Even drunken sailors go home when they run out of money, not these guys, they just print more. The previous comment is why this is an example of what I am talking about. People simply are not educated about economic metrics but are told it's Biden's fault or Trump's fault or whatever. The business cycle is hardly at all affected by what politicians do. Business operates in spite of business, and thank goodness for that. Anyone who thinks inflation has been tamed hasn't been to the grocery store. Totally right. The middle class cannot buy groceries and pay with economic indicators. We need a shorter version of the economy is great, you are just too stupid to realize it, mantra. The economy is great, for top quintile earners. Asset prices are skyrocketing, the outcome of 7 trillion printed stimulus dollars. 
However, the gap between U.S. median income of $75,000, and the income need to purchase a median-priced home, $120,000, has never been wider. Car payments now resemble pre-Biden house payments, in many areas. The vast majority of jobs created that are not federal, are part-time. The record stock market, rests largely on a handful of stocks. Numerous potential black swans circle. Precarious, is accurate. Let them eat, wait, why is there no vegan gluten-free organic cake mix on the shelves? Economic times are always tough. Nothing is really given to anyone. If you don't know that the rug could be pulled out from under you by a total stranger's bad economic decision, a natural disaster, or just some mentally unstable person you are not really aware. Change happens constantly and in unexpected ways. If you are unprepared, who is responsible for that? You want to know another reason Americans are so gloomy? They just heard President Biden say he just spoke with the President of France at the recent G7 conference who has been dead for several decades. Mitterrand died in 1996. Not sure when exactly Biden's mind did. And who is raising the rents to recover lost rents during the pandemic and who put tariffs on imported foods? Trump. Including ingredients to manufacture foods like bread and who cut back on inspections of beef, chicken and other animal products like cutting the budget of the FDA and the CDC. What short-term memories you have. Law. Uninspiring leaders at home. Running a government widely seen as dysfunctional have left people without hope that America is up to the challenge of fixing its problems. Yup. Incompetence in a government that is increasingly run by unelected college child bureaucrats who never had a real job in their lives. Woke, academia, woke, business leaders, woke, military that can't attract patriotic young people. Crime out of control because of the mythology that law enforcement is the problem, not criminals, obsession with pronouns, boys can be girls and vice versa. Presidents of our esteemed universities who are obviously tokens for racial reparations, a college degree that appears to be worthless after going $150,000 into debt, obsession with the hysteria that climate change is an existential threat. There you have it. It's not just about income, it's psychological. Progressives have taught us that we are evil and must be punished. Who could feel good about that? This article is ridiculous. Go to the grocery store, pay your electric bill, try to find home insurance, try to buy a car or a house, etc. Everything has doubled or tripled in cost. The economy might be strong but it is not coming up to the rise in prices. Expenditures, especially if one has kids is unprecedented. The shameful green revolution and government policy are costing us our lives and our American dream. The government is supposed to supply infrastructure, quality public schools, and reasonable, reliable energy, and protection from criminal violence and international terrorism, they are failing on all fronts but uncontrollable spending. Forget saving the planet when debt is going to kill America first. I can't speak for rest of the nation, but two bags of groceries in CA can cost $100. Before COVID, Little Caesars Pizza was $5. Now is $9. Federal Reserve and Biden can talk about CPI now down to 3.4% from July 2022's 9% and Fed's favorite PCE also coming down. But I don't see food prices coming down. My utilities bill, garbage bill, water bill continue to go up even though CA is drowning in flood and reservoirs are quite full. So I'm not surprised why Americans are so down on a strong economy. If you want to know the state of the economy, ask a small business owner, not an economist. I'm so tired of listening to ivory tower academics, who have never spent a day working in the private sector, telling my husband and me that what we see in our businesses is make-believe. Small businesses make up 80% of my client list and what I'm seeing is that people are having more difficulty staying current. That tells me that expenses are outpacing revenue. Good economy? Over the weekend I spent $38 at a fast food restaurant for two adults and two kids. It costs $78 to fill my gas tank. I spent $194 at the supermarket which filled three bags, reusable, of course. I just got a notification that my health insurance premium is going up by 8%. People everywhere are maxing out their credit cards. And the interest rate on those cards is through the roof. Today's young people have virtually no chance of buying their first home and settling down. College is becoming out of reach for millions. The consumer price index, in other words, crippling inflation, is up 17% since Biden took office, the worst in 40 years. Like every other policy of Biden, the economy is a failure for the average citizen. 
but if you are a smash and grab mob, or an illegal alien, things are really looking up. So true, the inflation statistics conveniently exclude food and fuel. If rent plus car payment plus car insurance consume 60 greater than percent of monthly income there is little to put towards a house. So why did you go to a fast food restaurant? My gas tank got filled for less than $48. Are you driving and sub? All of our expenses are matters of choice. People who are prudent as Mr. Bush used to say, cut back on the non-necessities if they really want to save for the future. People have asked me if my life is better now than it was when Biden took office. Well, I am more fit. I could barely carry a $100 worth of groceries out to the car back then with both hands. But now, I can carry $200 worth with one arm and little effort. Lack of trust in US government and their contempt for the voters. We are at $33 trillion in debt, a third of it added by Biden. In the last, jobs, report, half the new jobs were government, which is just vote buying in drag. Much of the rest were gig or second jobs. Big tech employers are laying off in mass. Border is wide open, president is senile. Most voters now are not registered Democrats or Republicans. They have essentially given up. Next election, they will look at local crime, war clouds, and the state of their own finances. And, vote accordingly. As they always do. Everything on TV and in social media is just noise to most voters now. Rent is $2,000 or more. Childcare is unaffordable for families. Inflation keeps eating our wages. People have no ability to save, because rent is $2,000. Taxes are everywhere. Now we get taxed on our deliveries, a soda, napkins, coffee lids. We pay more and more for less and less food, insurance, bills. No one can afford to own a home. We are paying for foreign wars while Americans struggle daily. Education is a joke and an unaffordable lie. But heck, the numbers don't lie, right? Some people cherry-picking the data and redefining the definition of a recession does not mask the fact that people are suffering. No matter what the current narrative is from the media or the USG, people know something is wrong when working people are going broke buying groceries at Walmart. While there is no question that a lot of Americans are fed up with this economy, if you have lots of money and have a big stock market portfolio, the economy is great. But if you are a typical working family, things are really tough right now. Now let's hear from the Honorable Judgey Judgerston from the Court of Public Opinion. Your Honor, what exactly is your opinion on today's topic? Thank you, Jimmy. This has been a difficult story to listen to. I see all kinds of folks in my courtroom. The rich, the poor, the privileged, the downtrodden. Essentially, the problem is that our political system is funded largely by major corporations and wealthy donors with self-serving points of view. So Congress passes bills that favor them. In other words... The very wealthy 1% largely control the government policy. That is why they pay no taxes. That is why average workers don't get paid enough. America is run by lobbyists, not government officials. America is corrupt, I'm sorry to say. Look at our last president, a total and complete criminal, and he has subverted the entire Republican Party. Many people say they are thankful that Trump is an idiot, and as a result, he will fail. I'm not afraid of Trump. I am afraid of Trumpism, and that represents the corruption of America. I'm retiring, gonna buy a huge RV and hang out at national parks for a few years. I can't contribute much to society anymore. It's up to the young people to sort this thing out. What America has to decide is that if it will continue to allow corruption in politics, or whether it will work for a continued meaningful democracy. I am skeptical, because the majority of voters are sadly uneducated and fed a constant stream of bull sugar from propaganda networks like Fox and Newsmax. Today's American politics stink to high heaven because it is rotten to the core. Any questions? This is Judgey Judgerston signing off. Have a terrific day. Thanks for that, Your Honor. Well, folks, there you have it, America's Opinion. Like and subscribe, and join our mailing list to receive our daily podcasts, or check into RadioAI.ca on the go or at home.